All nouns in Spanish have gender. People, places, animals, objects, ideas. Why is the word la mano, the hand, feminine, and the word el pie, the foot, masculine? It doesn't make any sense. Who invented these rules? Welcome to Spanish with Esteban. In this series, we answer common questions about Spanish by digging deep into its history and culture. I want to talk about a few questions that always come up in my Babel Life classes. Why do we have gender in Spanish? How does it work? How does it affect our society or our perception of people in our society? And what does it mean for inclusivity? If you enjoy nerding out about language, linguistics, and culture, be sure to subscribe to our channel. So in this video, we'll talk about three things, gender and inclusivity, the history of gender, where does it come from, and a grammatical explanation of gender. What is gender and how does it work in Spanish? For objects, gender is arbitrary. The fact that the word key, la llave, is feminine doesn't really mean anything. For people, it's different. If I talk about a group of people, both masculine and feminine, I would use the default gender. For example, nadie estaba contento, nobody was happy. If I talk about a man or a group of men, I would also use the default gender, as in él estaba contento, or ellos estaban contentos. There is no change between the default gender and the masculine gender. If I talk about a woman or a group of women, I would have to change the default gender to a different form, as in ella estaba contenta or ellas estaban contentas. So when I say todos estaban contentos, everybody was happy, there's no way of knowing if there are any women included in that group. Are they contentas? Probably not. What does this mean for inclusivity? Many people feel that grammatical gender reinforces a sexist perception in society. If feminine nouns are excluded from the default language, could that promote sexist behavior? This is an issue of visibility. The fact is that, regardless of the language, women and non-binary people have been relegated to the background of history. Now they're also invisible in the language? That sucks. Language evolves to respond to the needs of a community. And in our society, where we demand more gender equality, our language should not only reflect that demand, but contribute to it. The most important is that the language must change with the society. It's in a very, very important way to show respect for the identity of the other person. Individually, as a Spanish speaker, I believe it's my responsibility to think about how can I be more inclusive? Is there a way I can rephrase that sentence so that everybody feels included? In English, for example, it is commonly accepted to use they as a singular pronoun or find alternative pronouns to express your point. But what can we do in Spanish? Consider, for example, this sentence. Los niños están cansados. The children are tired. What strategies can I use to be more inclusive? I could include both and say, los niños y las niñas están cansados y cansadas. The sentence is, is too long. I could use a slash to show masculine and feminine. Also, a common practice has been the use of the at sign to represent both genders. But there are two issues with these practices. One, that they're not phonetic, so you can only show them in writing. And two, and most importantly, that they are excluding non-binary people. Another practice is to use an X instead of the gendered vowel, like in Latinx. This is more extended in the US since the X works phonetically in English, but in Spanish is kind of a mouthful. Todex, lex, amigex, demix, amigex, son mis amigex. Todex, los, amigex. And perhaps the best option, we can replace the gender vowel for the neutral E. This is not only phonetic, but Spanish speakers already associate the E as a non-gendered vowel. For example, les niñes están cansades. As a learner, you probably won't see any of these examples in your textbooks. In our Baba Life classes, we'll usually point to some of these considerations, but given that this is still an ongoing conversation, there are no concrete rules to learn or memorize yet. A very significant part of this debate is the opinion of the Real Academia de la Lengua. The Royal Spanish Academy is a prescriptive organization that attempts to unify a language spoken by 600 million people in 22 different countries. There has been mounting pressure to have the Academy accept inclusive language in their norms, or at least to recognize the issue. But this is not happening. 
The Academy says that the use of E as neutral is not valid since the masculine is also the generic form. As an example, they haven't added the word transgenero or transgender to the dictionary. What? Some people who defend the Academy also believe that the debate is unnecessary. Why are we debating the use of slashes or at signs or X's when there are real-world issues with inclusivity in Spanish-speaking communities? Well, I think the Real Academia de la Lengua is a clear example of the issues of inclusivity. The Academy was born in the 18th century as an attempt to standardize the Spanish that was being used in the Americas, where it was being combined with native languages. Initially, there was an attempt to maintain the purity of the language and to determine the correct way to speak. For many, the Academy is a colonialist institution that was originally created to impose and maintain an ideology in the colonies. Currently, the decisions made by the Academy are voted by 46 members. 80% of them are men. And as of the time of this filming, we couldn't find any clear LGBTQ representation in that group. So there it is, behind the inclusivity language debate, there's the underlying truth that there is a lack of representation of female and queer voices in our institutions. On the positive side, the fact that we're talking about it and looking for alternatives, it's, it's a positive step towards a more inclusive language. Use language as a way of not only communication, but also as showing inclusion. In most instances, people will appreciate it even more when you are speaking to a trans person or non-gender binary person, it will be extremely appreciated. The history of gender in Spanish. In the Spanish language, gender is grammatical and not semantic, meaning that it's just a linguistic consideration and not a biological one. When I say an object is feminine, I'm just talking about its grammatical gender and not about the organic or biological condition of its sex. There's no connection between the meaning of a word and its gender. Then why does it exist? The short answer is that I don't know. Uh, nobody does. As in evolution, chance variations occur in the language and things just stick. The long answer could be that putting nouns into groups helped with correspondence. In a long sentence, it's easier to assign an adjective to a noun if they're grouped in a category. The language family that later evolved into Latin divided nouns into animate and inanimate categories. And as Latin developed, that changed to masculine, feminine, and neutral categories. Greek and Latin philosophers noticed that genders seem to be random, but by assigning masculine and feminine concepts to these groups, their perception of those words changed. In their need to rationalize the use of grammatical gender, they started giving biological characteristics to some of these words. And that happened to Romance languages too. Think for example of the word liberty. In Latin, the word libertas, in French, the word liberté, and in Spanish, the word libertad are grammatically feminine. The gender is completely arbitrary, but now we personify the word liberty as a woman because of that. So even though grammatical gender is completely arbitrary, it can actually modify the perception we have of reality. And we have a giant statue as evidence to prove this. So yes, perhaps grammatical gender is arbitrary. Perhaps there is nothing inherently sexist about the language itself. But both the language and the society of the people who speak it have been excluding female presence. Words carry weight beyond their meaning. When we use inclusive language, we're not only clarifying a grammatical structure of a sentence or whatever, we are recognizing the voices that have been silenced. We are saying, I see you. Grammar of masculine and feminine words. Look at the word café and the word taza in this sentence. El café está frío. Lo preparé en esta taza. The coffee is cold. I prepared it in this cup. Why is it important to know café is masculine and taza is feminine? Because articles, several adjectives, some pronouns, and some demonstrative words like this and that will change because of it. Like we said before, there's no direct connection between the meaning of a word and its gender. So how do you know if a word is masculine or feminine? You just have to learn. There are some guidelines, but there are always exceptions. Usually, if a word ends in O, it's masculine. The most notable exception, la mano. Words that end in ama or emma are masculine even though they end with a, like programa, problema, 
drama, idioma, etc. These words come from Greek and tend to be a bit technical, and usually they're cognates with English. Also, words that end in accented vowel tend to be masculine, like colibri, ruby, tabu, and sofa. These words usually come from other languages, like Arabic or English, or languages native to the Americas. Words that end in a tend to be feminine. Words that end in d, z, or sion are usually also feminine, like ciudad, paz, canción. Some words are feminine even though they end in o, like la moto, because their long version ends in a, like la motocicleta. La foto for la fotografía, or la radio for la radiograma. Sometimes we use the singular masculine articles el and un with some feminine words, like el agua, el alma, el águila. The words are still feminine, like el agua fría, but the article is masculine. This only happens with singular feminine nouns that start with a stressed a. Why does this happen? The easy answer would be that we want to avoid alliteration. We don't want to say la agua, la agua, because that would be confusing. There is actually a neutral gender in Spanish. Some abstract adjectives can be used as nouns, and when they do, we'll use the neutral article lo. Like for example, lo profundo, or lo abstracto, or lo importante. Demonstrative words are interesting too. You would say este gato for a masculine noun, esta manzana for a feminine noun. But you'll use the neutral esto if you're not sure what you're talking about. Like, ¿qué es esto? So, that's gender in Spanish. As a learner, it's probably hard enough to try to memorize if a word is masculine or feminine and how to change some elements of the sentence to correspond to it, but you shouldn't be too concerned about making mistakes. As a Spanish speaker, I can tell you that I won't mind if you use the wrong gender in an adjective because you're learning my language. How cool is that? And obviously, the cultural aspects behind gender are difficult to contextualize when you're learning a new language. But inclusive language and learning a new language are not that different. We're figuring things out, we're going to make mistakes, but the goal is to connect with each other and find better ways towards empathy and understanding. The most important part of this is also to enjoy how it's fun to learn a new language. When you only not can learn a new language, you can also understand how to talk about inclusion in this new language. So thank you for being interested in another language. And also thank you so much for liking and subscribing to our channel. Also, what do you think about gender rules and inclusive language? Let us know in the comments. One more thing, if you want to practice gender in nouns and adjectives, you can take a Bubble Life class. You can take the class on describing your family or talking about friends. And we also have a class in the history of the colonies if that sounds interesting to you. That's it for today. Thank you for staying until the end. And I hope to see you in our next video.